Welcome to the Black and Iron Iron Cast. I'm Rye Face. Uh, Chrissy's not here because it's her day off, but we have Ray with us and also Drew. Um, really scraping the bottom of the barrel for our hosts. Ray's a good guy. Ray's a smart guy. And uh, he is the resident wizard at Black Iron. Sort of wizard. Paladin. Movement wizard. Like a level 10 paladin. Yeah. Hole control wizard. Hole control wizard. Yeah. Go, Go ahead and into that later. Yeah. Well, right now. Ray, who are you? Uh, my name is Ray Gorman. I am a physical therapist, um, mobility movement coach here at Black Iron Gym. I own Engage Movement, which is a physical therapy and um, performance based company that I actually run out of Black Iron here. Um, graduated from PT school in 2014 work in outpatient orthopedics and um, CrossFit athletes. Yeah, we'll skip the whole alphabet suit next to your name, I guess. You got all those. SFMA, a lot of vowels. SFMA, a lot of vowels. DPT, P- PT, Wallcat, as you once referred Wall to cats. me. Yeah. Which yeah. was a good one, I like that one. But you're credentialed. Yeah, yeah, so uh, he a, seems a, to know a what real he's physical about. therapist, as you could say. Now, is it true that you um, run this business, not out of Black Iron Gym, but a uh, paneled van that you parked outside the gym. I had to sell the van. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. think I sold it to Brian. Oh, well, you, you gave up on a lot of discretion there, man. I mean, besides yeah. the snow last night, I don't know if everybody else got snow. I got snow. You got snow I mean, last night? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, no snow for me. No. I mean... Is that slang for cocaine? No, no, no. I was just concerned about you living outside without a van. Oh no. But at least the weather's apartment now. No. He closed he closed escrow on a Ford Fiesta a couple weeks ago. It's a good car. It's a great car. It's reliable. I mean it's a Ford it's a Ford party. (laughs) It's a Ford party on wheels. (laughs) Aptly named. Ah god damn it. Yeah. (laughs) We're ad libbing this whole thing. Oh yeah. Um so what's your uh, philosophy when it comes to I don't know uh, what am I trying to say here? I think what we're trying to ask is where do you think your approach to uh, mobility, performance-based mobility, uh, differentiates itself from maybe uh, current the, you know the current stat like the status quo uh, in CrossFit and and, and elsewhere? You know, where do you see yourself? Different, you know, separate um, yourself from the from the rest of the crowd. I think it's I think it's tough being, you know, movement oriented in in the CrossFit community because everybody wants to find something on the internet that works for them. Um, you know, I mean, I, I routinely post videos. You've got Mobility One out there. You've got Rom Watt out there. You've got a lot of good products out there. But the problem with uh, how it gets applied to CrossFit is that you have crossfitters with minimal knowledge of biomechanics and the way the body works trying to apply these things in in a manner that is maybe not in the right order or or maybe it's the wrong thing that they need they're trying to get more mobile but they really need a stability drill Um, and you know it's pretty routine that i have someone come to me and say well hey my hips are tight i can't squat i do a quick screen in their hips and it's full range of motion um, so your hips aren't the issue, it's, it's how you load in the squat or, or how your brain perceives the load into the squat that you just can't get there, um, you know, and, and it just becomes an education point, not just to athletes, but to coaches that you've got to look at more than just what's presented in front of you. You, you may have to break it down a little bit. And uh, you reposted something recently on your Instagram, uh, at Engage Movement, but there's a few vowels missing on that one, right? It's yeah, it's, a, it's at Engage, M-V-N-T. Okay. Um, you reposted something from our friends at uh, Active Life Doctors. I did, yeah. Sean and Jeremy. Um, Post a lot of good stuff. Yeah, which I, I think kind of uh, it, it encapsulates what you were saying uh, just now. I think you're pulling it up, so... Yeah, so um, Active Life guys posted, replacing quality treatment with self-treatment is like replacing a life vest with a brick. You're going to drown. And I think that's kind of been the, the theme of the week for me in, you know, 
Um, I, I recently had a post about the banded overhead lat distraction. Uh, probably one of my favorite mobilizations with the caveat that you should have a healthy shoulder if you're doing that mobilization. If you're one of those people who has impingement signs and you're going overhead and you're slamming that joint into more protraction or more, you know, flexed and, and reaching out position, then that's, that's going to suck for your shoulder eventually. Um, it may give you the short term relief, but you know, you're, you're really just doing more damage because you're thinking that it's, it's a fix all and it's not, um, it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be tailored correctly for the athlete. I think, I think that's what we commonly see in the CrossFit community and, and elsewhere is you have, um, athletes, uh, kind of with this, this moral hazard that, uh, that we typically saw with like WebMD where people start diagnosing themselves. Yeah. And if yes, you have cancer. Yeah. You know? if you, well, a, a lot of different, uh, uh, diseases and illnesses exhibit the same, uh, pathologies. Well, I have a fever and my back hurts. It must be, it AIDS. must be AIDS. Um, yeah. Super AIDS. And I think we're seeing now is, is it's not a bad thing to make information available to the general public. It is not a bad thing to, as much as possible, distill really complex concepts into layman's terms to make that information accessible. But I think what we what we have seen happen is that people tend to um, forego or eschew actually physically going to see a qualified practitioner. Yeah. Um, with you know, who went to school, right, for that very thing, and, and thinking that you know they can uh, that they can self diagnose right. and self treat, which in some cases. You can, um, but in a lot of cases, especially the what I've seen, but the is, joints. it's uh, that's it's not always that simple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, you have people who come in and they're like, "Man, you know, I've got shoulder pain. Can I come see you?" And and I'm like, "Yeah, I've, I would love to. I'd love to take a look at you and, and evaluate you and see what's going on and get you back to your goals and moving better." And you know, when they walk through the door, they're holding their shoulder, and next thing you know they've got weakness throughout their entire arm. Um, and they probably didn't even put together that it's not really their shoulder that hurts. It's a, it's a ridiculous symptom from their neck. And if you're just trying to treat your shoulder there, you're going to end up making things worse. And can you fix that just by laying on a lacrosse ball? No, you, I'm, out, I'm out of ideas then. No, I don't so know. So what, what you're saying is <laughs> if uh, somebody comes in, oh man, I can't get over 200 pounds with my snatch. It's not that they're immobile necessarily. Uh, it could be, you know, it could be that they're immobile. It could be that they don't have stability to get into a, a snatch. Um, another example is I had a, a client come in with only thing that hurt was pain at the bottom of the overhead squat or in a squat snatch. Um, and being that I'm in the gym and I can do what I do with a loaded barbell as part of my evaluative tool, um, I said, okay, let's load up a barbell and watch you snatch. And in watching him squat snatch, there was absolutely zero stability at the bottom of the snatch position. The guy was landing on his toes and all that force has to be compensated somewhere. It's gotta be stabilized somewhere. And rather than a solid contact point in that foot into the ground, it's all being translated up into his shoulder because that weight has, has nowhere to sit, right? And the only joint that is then going to control it from there is going to be the shoulder joint because it's it's got the it's got the proximity and unfortunately it's got the mobility and the trying to be stability yeah. to get you in a position that you can balance. And I think that's kind of the the salient uh, question I have that I've asked other people as well and gotten varied responses is um, I think a lot of people um, use that term interchangeably mobility and stability but they're describing two very different things that require different approaches so. I guess as succinctly as you can, how do you differentiate the two? Mobility versus so stability. A, a, a true mobility issue is it makes no difference how you get to the range of motion, um, actively or passively, right? Like if you're, on your, if you're standing up in a squat and you go to squat down and you can't get your hips past 90 and then you lay down and you try to pull your knee to your chest and you still can't get it past 90, that's, that's, 
that's a true mobility problem. Something isn't moving. It doesn't get better if uh, force is applied or... It does, yeah. no, no. It's, it's stuck there, right? It's, it's an immobile joint. Whereas a stability problem would be, I have somebody who comes in and they squat, they can only get to, let's say, 70% of their squat. I have them grab onto the squat rack and hold it for support or use a band, and they're able to drop full depth. That's a stability problem somewhere. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's not in the hips, it's in the thoracic spine in that we can't get that extension rotation component to, to hold ourselves at the bottom of a squat once we pass a certain degree, which is where the drills like a goblet squat come in, um, an assisted squat. And it's also where things like the old school squat therapy it falls on deaf ears. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere staring at a wall trying to squat with no thoracic rotation stability. So that that's where it comes into play. It's like you can try and figure it out yourself or you can go to a screen. I mean, even a movement screen is going to give you more information that you never want to know if you go to the right practitioner. Yeah. You know. I think I think for me as as a coach and having uh you in house uh having uh, active life, uh, people that I can routinely consult with who are professionals in their respective fields. Um, it allows me to more comfortably kind of stay in my lane because as a, as a CrossFit coach, um, I do. I, we, we, we talk regularly. I borrow drills that mm -hmm. you show me and I, I implement those with my class. We, we discuss that, you know, what worked, what didn't work, where are we seeing improvement. Um, and I think that's a lot of the utility in in following profiles like yours, um, yeah. in having a lot of different resources available to you just so you can kind of see how other people are approaching common problems. Um, but what I don't do and what I have to refrain from doing that, unfortunately I don't see a lot of other coaches do is refrain from, um, diagnosing right, and making right. recommendations. And that's where you kind of have to know your lane because we have we're fortunate to have you here, but when people ask me, hey, I'm getting, I have kind of like shoulder pain, it hurts when I go overhead, like are there any drills I can do? I'm like, yeah, well, you can, the first thing you can do is go see Ray. Right. I mean, he's here for a reason. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it, you know, it is pretty uh, often. Shoulder I want you to write nice. this down. Go see the guy who has <laughs> doctor in front of his name. Right. And that is a common thing that happens is that people are like, oh, well, then my, my coach told me to do this. And, you know, coaches can assess. They have the right to assess, but they don't – they shouldn't have the – I don't think that they're licensed to address the impairments or correct the impairments. Um, now, that becomes a gray area. Is that, you know, is that a big deal in the end for kind of just the average Joe? I, I don't really think it is. Um, I think you're kind of – you're just, you're not going to get anywhere with that, right? Because it's going to happen to some degree. But it becomes when it's, when it's a true issue that needs to be addressed by somebody who's licensed and who can put a movement diagnosis on that person and say, okay, well, you know, we know how to treat this. This is what we do. This is what I went to school for is, is to treat this. And then it's communicating with the coach and saying, hey, um, this person can come back and do X, Y, and Z but they should probably stay away from A, B, and C yeah. until, we, until we're done treating the problem. Um, and a lot of it's got to fall on the responsibility of the athlete to allow that tissue healing time. Mm -hmm. um, a big thing that we see is athletes go back too soon. And, you know, the, the tissue's not done healing, and then you load it, and now you're back three weeks. Right? Yeah. I mean, and it's unfortunate. And it's, it's hard to really say like, oh, I'm going to get you better in three visits because nobody stops training for six weeks. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it's not that easy. Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to, there's going to be a, an expected period of time, but it's got to be reasonable and, and you've got to still allow that athlete to um, maintain their level of fitness while, while they're rehabbing. Yeah. And um, I think this segues really nicely into, um, the, uh, the, the the group that you have become recently kind of associated with a, a, a consortium of qualified uh, yeah. practitioners, um, clinical athletes. Yes. Uh, Which has been are, awesome. They're going to be, uh, Black Iron Gym is going to be hosting uh, clinical athlete. Uh, you, uh, John Hodges, who's local here. Yeah, and Quinn. Uh, from Juggernaut Training Systems. Um, it's going to be really cool. And I think 
that's great that, that there is now a, a collective, uh, a national, is it international, 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 international collective of qualified fitness practitioners um, that people can feel confident referring their members or clients to. And I think for a long time there was always kind of this uh, this uh, uh, barrier between the the CrossFit or, or strength community and 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 you know the physical therapy community because there was and it, it, you know you know exactly what I'm describing mm-hmm. having been doing CrossFit now for almost as long as I have um, you know I'm sure there are a lot of DVDs that are like what the fuck are you guys doing and yeah um, yeah it's crazy but to see how far it's come now and, and to see now that there is um, this uh, and it's and you have to be vetted too. It's not like anyone can just sign up, right? right? So, so describe a little bit about the whole clinical athlete thing. Uh, so a clinical athlete is basically a a forum and and a group of like minded individuals who um, want to bridge that gap between performance and rehab. Um, we're not big into the old, you know, just isolated movement stuff. We we have a really movement based. Um, research-based background um, and it's it's mostly people who have either participated in a sport or who are involved in CrossFit or who have some sort of athletic goal that they've been a part of for quite some time and you know if, you, if you're interested in looking for an, a provider you can actually go to the website clinicalathlete.com and search for a provider by you and uh, you just fill out a quick little sheet and then they'll give you a list of providers that that are near you. Um, you know, some of them are insurance based and some of them are cash based. Um, I myself in the gym am cash based, but I also work at a clinic that takes insurance. So it's it's just kind of a it depends, right? But you know, if you a big thing that I hear from athletes that I see in the gym is, well, I went to physical therapy. They gave me some exercises and stretches to do. But when I told them that, you know, my shoulder hurt when I was doing butterfly pull-ups, they just looked at me like I was crazy. Well, that's because 95% of the physical therapists and chiropractors and everyone out there has no clue what a butterfly pull-up is. They've never been, they've never been an athlete. They, 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 well, maybe they've been an athlete, but they've never been a CrossFit athlete, right? I, and maybe they have no clue what the mechanics of a snatch should look like, or in my opinion, more importantly, should feel like, mm-hmm. right? Like. I'd say when, when you're in a session with me as, as your physical therapist, I'm 50% PT and 50% coach. Um, because it's, it's not only my job to rehab you, but it's my job to make you go back into the gym and move well, move better. And if, and if I'm not doing, if I'm just doing that physical therapy portion and I'm not doing that coaching portion, you're gonna come back and come back and come back. And while that's a great business model, that's not really what my goal is as a PT. My goal is to make you self-sufficient and to educate you about your body so that when you do have a shoulder issue, you can wisely choose how you mobilize and how you recover and how you modify your training to get back quicker. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Make no, it a whole, short little thing. Yeah, no, but I, I mean, what we I, got I, we got eight, about eight. We minutes. we covered all the really interesting clinical sciencey smart stuff. Okay, but that's not what fucking we can talk, talk about that. All that's day. not what I okay. Can let's here. talk about we can bore the bore the stuff. We need that. to introduce. We haven't come up with a name for the bit yet, but right, it's kind of like uh, uh, the grading system. Oh, you want to play that right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, before we go any further, though, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, thank. Um, uh, Monster Energy, aka Monsters Inc., aka Fred Savage and Little Monsters, aka Mo- Charlie Monster. Theron as Eileen Mornos in Monster. Thank you. Billy Crystal, Monsters Inc. I already covered that one. Oh, did you? Say that? Mike Wazowski. Oh yeah. I'm gonna try to come up with like a whole bunch of quick references. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, man, I watch a lot of movies, yeah, man, and I have I have the energy to do that to stay up late to watch films because of Monster. Because of Monster. Delicious. That's Delicious. shameless, but like you know what? But I I feel like I spend about twenty percent of my income on monsters. We're saving you so much money from this. Yeah, now. so thank, thank you guys. guys. Seriously, thank you. Um, I think okay. Ryan once had a wall filled with monster. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, this is basically what his office looks like wall, already. His wall paper. Yeah, these monster. are full, but I sh- yeah, I took him to Ryan's office yeah. and showed you like this. Yeah, is- and then I stopped doing it because I got judged. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, no judgments here. 
But yeah, so uh, to introduce it really quickly, hopefully next week we'll have like an exciting, like catchy name for it. Um, but essentially what we're going to do is Ryan's just going to give us a list of topics, people, places, things, and we're going to give them a grade. Are we, are we doing letter grades or numerical? Yeah. We're going to do a letter grade and you guys are going to write it and you're going to show it and then you're going to explain why. Okay, we're going to go Ray. We're going to go Drew. Oh, this seems fine. Yeah, yeah. right? So it's a A, B, C, D. Yeah. F. Yeah. Classic school grades. Minuses, pluses. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to spout off topics. Uh, I don't even, I have a list, but I'm not even going to use the list. Okay. How many categories are you doing? Um, as many as we want. It. Uh, you got a coach. Do you want to do one? Let's just do five right, right, categories. Right, you got four or 430. We got 430. Okay. Let's, let's keep it to five categories. All right. Uh, first, first topic. topic. Drake. 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 Drake, Drake is, is the first topic. topic. Great We're talking hitter. like Drake, just, just in general, everything, everything. everything. Drake, Drake you, you get to you get, get to decide. decide. Yeah. yeah, you you get yeah you get to defend, defend your own yeah. grading. Ah oh, man, so like I saw Drake. Right right I saw. Oh, I'm sorry. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna grade him. Yeah, you're gonna grade him, and then Drew's gonna grade him, and you're gonna you you're gonna give a back and forth. Ray gives Drake a C. I give him a B plus. Why? Ray? Why a C? That's average, man. Yeah. yeah. They get degrees, but they, they're not summa cum laude. I, I like Drake, um, and I wish I could give him two grades here, one for live and one for his albums. Um, if, I had to, if I had to give Drake a grade on each of those, live, he would, he would probably get a D. Uh, that, was, that was probably one of the most boring things I've seen in my life. But um, album-wise, I would give him a B. So I had, so to, split split the, I had to split the difference okay. and give him a C. You know, he's got to work, 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 work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that song, by the way. Do you really? Because I was literally going to say that I cannot stand that song. And that's, you know what, that's probably why he didn't get an A. You, you know, know what really made the song for me? There's a, there's a video of this little mini pig, mm -hmm. and it's kind of <laughs> shaking its butt to it. And I think now every time it just makes me happy when I think so of it. So there's a positive pig. association. Yeah, there's a great association nice. with that. Plus it annoys the shit out of my girlfriend, so. Good. Good. Well, that's always a reason. I feel like that deserves like a plus then, man. Yeah, it's like a C, C plus, plus maybe. Yeah. All right. We'll give it to him. Um, I have never seen Rihanna song. I've never seen Drake live. Um, but I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Consistent. He has not made a bad album. I think he has uh, as much credibility with the uh, the backpack and conscious rap scene, the people who appreciate substance and hip hop, as he does. Like the guy, the guy will contribute to tracks that you know are, are provocative. Um, anyone who anyone who Kendrick Lamar is like, yeah, man, let's do some stuff together. And then Rihanna. Yeah, like that, that guy, guy has broad, broad appeal, appeal. And, and that is also so why I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't give him an A is because I just, you know, this is not me criticizing him at all because he's make that money, man. He's Canadian. But I wish I wish he was a little bit more discerning sometimes the things that he attached his name to or contributed some bars on. Right. Um, he did destroy Meek Mill, though. Oh, oh, he did no, 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 no question. That, got, that gets an A. No question. Oh, my God. That was. Yeah. But uh, no, I, honestly, for me, I think it's great that the arguably one of the, uh, the the top rappers in the game right now is a mixed race Canadian Jew. Yeah, man, that's pretty awesome. Like we've come a long way, long way. Who was on Degrassi? Yeah. So C B plus was it average? Uh, we call that a C plus or a B minus for Drake? We'll go B minus. B minus. B minus for Drake. All right. Next topic. Beards. Beards. Okay, Ray. This is a hard one for me. All Since right. mine is monstrous. Oh yeah. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll read off your grades. All, right. All right. All right. Ray, you gave beards a B. Why? Uh, partially envious, because I can't grow them. Beard. Yeah, I, I uh, about to be twenty nine and. Um, I have no facial hair, which is, which is, I hear, a good thing because I hear also bald on the bottom. bottom. No. <laughs> no. So so it's, it's just, it's just, uh, just, just never migrated It just never migrated up. Nice. Yeah. So, so that's, that's why, why I got to give it a B. Um, I think they're a little overrated. You know, I, it seems like a hassle, yeah. I can imagine. Uh, yeah, I don't think I see one in my future, though. Yeah. You gave it a C plus. C plus. I've I've had a, a pretty serious beard that I did not maintain 
and I realized how much work it would actually be to try and maintain and, and coiffure and, and, and keep that beard healthy and not look puby looking. I mean, on my when face. you say maintain, you mean like oh, there's there's, 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 there's shampoos tones. and there's oils. Oh yeah, and it grew mostly around my neck. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, that's it terrible. It was. Terrible. It wasn't good. So I have immense respect for the guys who are attentive and maintain their beards. I think C plus is because there's become like this like cult of the beard. Like it's like who you are. It's the cult of it's like this lumber sexuality thing. Like oh god, yeah, I don't need to have a personality. If the guy rides a pixie and has a serious beard, then he must be everything that I want. Conceivably, man, like a beard, beard used to utility yeah. kept your fucking face warm here's how you get what's the statement on fashion this is how you get basic bitches yeah grow a beard and use your first middle last name on everything and wear a plaid yeah. shirt exactly so I I, I appreciate a good beard like Kyler our friend Kyler Kyler's, Kyler's majestic god damn he has a good looking beard my cousin right? has a good beard good beard but it's one of those things well, too like, yeah. it's cap. he has to be well maintained but it, I just it's not yeah. it, with Kyler, it's not what you think of first when you think of him. No, no, no. It's 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 a part of who he is. It's, it's not who he is. It's his mullet. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Next All right. topic. Cilantro. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, let's see. I, I think got an A plus and an F. Go. I think genetics. I think recessive allele groups are responsible for this. Can you not stand the taste of cilantro? So it, it has no point. So it's literally like a, a chewy little piece of string that comes in your burrito bowl. I don't. I don't understand why they put it there. No, man, it's it's a garnish. It's not meant to be. If I if I could subsist alone on sriracha and cilantro, I would. I, I don't know. It smells. Yeah, that it, taste. It, 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 it sounds horrible. Oh, it smells. It smells so amazing. It, it, it brings like this just very complex kind of peppery note to different foods. I just fucking love cilantro. It's, it's like, like you get a bite of your burrito bowl or something. You're like, man, that was. Do you not like the taste of it? Just taste well, like it's terrible. just like you get a, and then you get the bite that has the cilantro, and you're like, damn, it was just a bite of cilantro. Like it's just, and then you're like picking out of your teeth. All right, well, what what are your thoughts on it, Proctor? I like it. I, I know it tastes like soap, but I still like it. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. That was there was a big division on that. Yeah. yeah so that was great. Yeah. That was, All right. That was perfect. Two more to go. Uh, let's see. Wet wipes. Wet wipes. Mm. For your ass. Oh, for, for ass applications? Yeah. Just in general? Uh, you know, I, I, well, I'm, I'm giving, giving away my grade. I like wet wipes. wipes. They're, obviously, like a, they're obviously an A for, for Ryan. It's refreshing. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't actively use them, so I can't really... Uh, yeah. Maybe I need the life-changing experience that you've had. So, so C for Ryan. It's like, it's like using a bidet for the first time. I give them a C because I see that they're they're practicalness, you know, yeah. they're practicality to them, but they're they're not in my repertoire to speak on. I don't I don't use them either. Um, I have used them. Um, they I will say this: they are a lot more effective than than just standard ply tissue paper. For especially, me, especially, I feel like they're not good for the environment either. I mean, like he. Well, I mean, well, but I mean, if you if you're not taking care of your downstairs situation, well, the problem and you're for me wiping is, peanut butter out of carpet. The, well, that's, that's exactly what it's for me, man. It's, yeah. like, it's like it's like wiping a marker. Like it just, it like there's so the, they are helpful for that. <laughs> Next <laughs> up, but, but no, honestly, the problem with me is, is that because I am so her suit down there, right? And it's particularly hot. The last thing I want to do is feel even more humid and moist. Yeah. Okay, that's very good. That's fair. Like I just, that just seems so. Hey, okay, speaking of poop, did you were you responsible for uh, making question for making Brian poop after you adjusted him? You know, I don't know if our I don't know if our postural pelvic restoration techniques um, have an effect on bowel and bladder. I do know that they affect the pelvic floor, but but not quite the uh, the uh, innervation to to the bow- bowels. Fair enough. That sounds so fucking so, smart to describe. You're right. A BM. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was. You're Maybe just more powerful. You're you're neurologically activating everything down there, and you're yeah, adjusting you're right. the pelvis. Well, yeah, he's building the brain poop connection. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the coffee does that too. Yeah. And monster. That's that's a. <laughs> isn't, yeah, that's a neurological <laughs> reflex, right? The who is you? No, no, no. <laughs> shitting after coffee, you're shitting after you eat a meal. Uh, it's, it's not more you're stimulant. Not, it's yeah, more yeah, stimulant. Yeah. 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 Well, well, with coffee, but. With, I thought it was just fun. After you eat a meal, it, it can rabbit. trigger. It triggers I it was just uh, shit. Put on other shit, literally. 
Like, you splutter, splutter, but, like, there's people that think, like, oh, like, oh, like, oh, I just right. ate P.F. Chang's and I immediately have diarrhea. Right. Oh. Now you got to clear out the system for the next uh, Well, it's, next a, it's, a, yeah. it's not, you're not shitting out your P.F. Chang's, you're shitting out what's already there, but uh, it had a trigger yeah, effect. I'm not a, I'm not a poop doctor, there's, man. Yeah. I'm well, not a physical therapist. Come on, man. You're a miracle hey, worker. man, you know, the intersections yeah. of a lot of different things. Okay, let's think of Last of one. Funny. Make it a good one. Last one. I'm just going to have to cut out like three minutes while I think about this. Go broke, man. Let's go big on this one. Something topical, something relevant. Sending or receiving dick pics. You guys both have long-term relationships. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to come out on this and say it's an F. I mean, that's, a, that's not a good idea, man. There's nothing flattering about dick. You know, I mean, if, if I were, if I were a girl, yeah, I mean, if I were a girl, that guy opened that up and be like, ah, oh, come on, man, really? Are you talking about unsolicited dick pics or just, I, I just don't You've never really sent a dick pic to your present no, girlfriend? No. You've never sent a dick pic no. to your girlfriend? No. Times have changed. Making me feel <laughs> slutty. Times have changed. It's weird, man. You have really fucking grown up. That's weird. Have you ever? Sent. I, you know, I don't think so. When we were in college, like dick pic technology. Was when we were, yeah, I mean, when we were in college, you were just, I mean, you just saw, you just saw it. it Disposable was there. camera. Like, there was a difference between like just seeing it and then like send. Like I don't want to open my phone, get a text message, and then you know there's dick, and then Drew's probably gonna send me one later. So right. Yeah, probably. Well, that's what yeah, Snapchat. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, for it's me, there bad. was there was some utility to it, uh, especially when. Chrissy and I first started dating and she was in Africa and we spent a lot of time apart and it's one of those things like, oh, we have to be intimate somehow. Yeah. And I can control how my dick looks in that environment. I, I can make sure it's a flat angle. I don't think you can, man. No, absolutely. Think you're, hey, well, if you're talking if you just about that and more, Moreover, I have, I have received compliments on my penis before. People tell me that I have a very Same. pretty penis. I don't, yeah. I don't so know. So it's one, it's one of my five best features that I can't share with the world on a routine basis. I don't know, man. And, you know. What are the other four? The other four? I, I don't have that was, that was bluff man I don't have four I think I, I, think I have two I've been told I have nice dimples and a pretty penis that's it I got two I got two so you say it's an F um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's a C plus um, cause context it's, it's, matters yeah context matters it, it, it can get you in a lot of trouble but it's also, you know it's kind of fun to yeah. each their own again. Yeah, man. Like, it's fun to send a, a, an unsolicited dick pic to my girlfriend occasionally. Let her know, hey, I'm thinking about you. This is me and my best. I'm not in a position where it would adversely affect me. I, I, don't I think, think you're wrong there. So, so none of us plan on running for office, correct? Right. right. Okay. 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 That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I gotcha. I gotcha. And I would never do that out of the blue. If anything, you should use Snapchat. Yeah, you should use one second that. Snapchat just yeah, so they get go. a quick glimpse of it. The guy just open with on your story. Yeah. On your story. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I at least still know. waiting for that to happen. I at least know the girl. We've had a convert like in, in the past. Like I, I never understood. I never initiated it. Unsolicited dick pic. Like that was that was their I'm, handshake. I'm like, never, hello. <laughs> I've I'm never never sent them out of the blue. I've never initiated that now I've never I've never been on tinder but I imagine that that's how it is like kind of problem. <laughs> just, just, just explain um, <laughs> like if you're a girl like that's pretty much all you get it's like, like hey what's up dick. Dick. dick so <laughs> I guess this is a more, question more appropriate for Ryan but Ryan do you have at the height of your of, of your um, dick sending days um, did you have a library of your best cock shots that you no. <laughs> or no. was it always it was always in the moment <laughs> In the moment. Nice. I respect that. Man. Nice. Same as me. Because. You think you'd keep like a top ten. Because so. I've had too many situations where. Girls recycled their photos. Right. That's so fun. Have so you experienced that? You had to experience that. Or was it like. So you, or was it you, you find out like. Your, one? You, you, you find out your Eskimo brothers with. At minimum someone's nudes. Yeah. I, don't I know. know. We're Eskimo That's brothers. We're Eskimo brothers with someone's nudes. And they were the exact same nudes. And. That means we're also Eskimo brothers with Matthew Millions, because uh, the same ones. And they were the same nudes with her, too. Yeah. Right, have, yeah. You ever, have you ever had to sit the girl, and don't act like you don't have a fucking history. You know what, man? Yeah. None of this has, has ever happened, happened to me. You, a girl? Never. You, you, I swear. No girl you've ever slept with, that you know slept with someone else, you know, that you're Eskimo brothers with, uh, you guys ever, like, deduce that she recycled her nudes? No. Except the same nude photos. No. That, I, you know, I, that was never a thing for me, like, to... 
Like that. I, I, I don't have we a big history. We girls that Yeah, I <laughs> think really does. Man. Damn. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had my time, but it was, uh, it was different than I Ray guess. lived his life in analog. Nothing digital about it. He dipped down in real time. Yeah, yeah. it was no. Male you know, Polaroids of his dick. <laughs> Polar pictures, man. So the Polaroids. Yeah. Yeah. Mail. Yeah. yeah. You know? Email Digi- attachment. Digital maybe. era scary. Yeah. Oh, well. Wow. Someone shouldn't. steals your picture using it as their own. Yeah, but if that's one, if that's one of the pictures that ultimately gets stolen of me, I guess there's worse things that could happen. That's true. Here's, 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 here's the thing. As long as like, like, Justin Bieber's dick pics came out, I'm like, all right, well, yeah, good for you, you, if you. Good job. If you're just sending pictures of a a dick. It's a weird Just a dick. disembodied dick. Yeah. You have plausible deniability. Oh, it's still in- attached. Well, I mean, no, it's, it's with not no context. From their with, body. No, with no context. You know, it's very <laughs> me- medical. It's yeah. very medical in nature. You know, you didn't know tasteful artfulness of it. You know, no, it just, no it thought of composition man. or framing. I don't know. You should try this with your girlfriend, dude. Just send her a dick pic. Just see how it goes. Maybe she's into it. Maybe. Hey, hey, we'll hey, hey, this is the mood I'm in right now. Boom. Boom. You got it. Yeah. Like I said, man, like maybe hey, invite some hey, romance. Are you She's not inspe- expecting it. She opens yeah. it at work. Hey, are you exactly. alone? See it. Hey, exactly. you alone? Yeah. Boom. Boom. There Boom. you go. Dick. She's already a fan of, I presume. There you go. I mean, I've had a girl or two. Is it really two or is it multiples of? Well, I'm just trying to think of how many times this happened where out of the blue, just bam. Like, Eve? Beef shot? Uh, no, I'm not a dude. Well, I've had five, one beef shot and then one. Five A. Not a huge fan of the beef shots. Like the straight on gynecological. Yeah. Beef it's very, yeah. And that's not flattering. And that's, and that's, too. And that's the. Uh, There's nothing flattering about it. And that's, side side down, that's down, how. You know? yeah, that's like, how chicks feel 100% of the time yeah, about ex- dick pics. That's, that unless, is exactly my point. Yeah. Unless you're never like, unless they like you. Yeah, exactly. I guess. But that's the thing, is like, I, every, every, every dick pic convinced me. Every dick pic I sent was with a girl who you know, I, 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 when I used to work at, to you each their own. When I used to work at the Wild Orchid, uh, a wrong number texted me one day, and I was at Red Robin. Yum. And I'm laughing because, I'd like, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, hey, like, hey, baby, guys. what are you up to? And I was like, I think you got the wrong number. Well, who's this? Went back and forth, and I was with uh, my roommates, and they were, they were like, yo, fuck with this dude. And uh, like, oh, you know, blah, 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 where you work? I was like, I work at the Wild Orchid. Oh. And, <laughs> boom, boom, got a dick pic. There you go. Not so a good they, one. Assuming you were a stripper. Right. Not a door person. Right. And I was like, yeah, come see me tonight. Ask see, for Ryan. This guy, the guy's a misogynist. It made, it made an assumption that, you know. Yeah, that's just... Just because I take my clothes off for money. That's exactly. I want to see there you go. your body. Well, honestly, I think Auspicious should start to the uh, grading system. We need to come yeah. up with a better name for it. Right, and I, like, I would love to do it in a non-podcast setting, but this is a good start. This is a great start. Cool. Great start. Ray, thank you. Thank you, awesome. Ray. guys. Thanks for having me. Ray, the dick pic sender. E. Never. Nah, okay, never. Uh, say bye to everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.